So let's delete the stuff we don't need. Okay, so let's start changing our AI. Uh, it's not going to be a bigger change, to be honest, because there's no need to. So we are doing one mistake. That, not that big. Anyways, okay. First of all, we're going to get rid of the polynomial agent. Actually, I'm going to get rid of the entire uh, the entire folder for it. That means we're going to have to delete a couple of things and just reset up. Hopefully, it doesn't take you too a lot of steps back. And of course, you can see that we're going to have some issues with the level manager. We actually won't be needing level manager anymore. And on our AI handler, we're going to do the bulk of the work. But we're basically just going to delete this. And now all we need to be changing is wherever we say stop and wherever we say tick. Okay. So uh, not tick. This just gives you if you're working. And let's see this. And this is for set destination. So let's create a script actually that will be used as a connection between our AI handler and anything else we want to change. Say we want to change the Pathfinder in the future, we're going to do this through that script. Okay, that would be the ideal thing to do. And so let's go on to our AI and I'm going to say uh, AI Pathfinder hook that is in English. Let's open this up properly. Let this pass this, of course. Okay, so we're going to need set destination. We always need that. We're going to need a vector three. For the target position we want to go, and then now there is uh, a couple of different ways to do this as well with the Pathfinder. We're going to need the namespace for the Pathfinder project because it's going to be what's responsible for accessing the seeker. So let's add the start. So we have seeker and I think we don't even need to be using the seeker at all, but let's do it for now. And we're going to use the AI path as well. And we're going to say AI path equals get component AI path. So, and one way to do this would be to say on the AI path set path or actually you can check the remaining path if you have a path if you're searching for a path if you're reaching the end of the path you can do the search path let me find it which one it was so do a move based on the, your delta position mm. Let's see, path and mask. I will keep forgetting what it's called, but it's basically you can see there's other stuff that you can use, although this one is deprecated. You can even set a destination right away. However, I wouldn't do this with this destination in mind because it can create a few more. Yeah, it can create some trouble down the road because this doesn't go through, I think it doesn't go through the RVO. We can actually test this and if it works, then even better. So let's go on the uh, AI handler and let's set up the AI Pathfinder hook. And on start, I 
now technically you could do this as a virtual void and then use this as a base class and go from there and do whatever you want but i think for our case for this game this will be fine without doing anything without uh, doing any uh, inheritance okay so yeah this will be fine if we need to if you want to edit this without changing the scripts from the ai handler then you can just create styles of this class and just change the the logics you do or whatever doesn't matter okay so let's try the first thing i'm going to change this however we're just going to, to remove this entirely and for for this one let's say eh, okay let's come this out for now and we'll do this later so pathfinder hook set destination target position I see we already have a callback and the callback where do we use it or what do we use it is for on reach target and on reach target happens from the subclasses for the AI okay we're going to have to include the callback for once we are done with it and then we'll expand from there let's see here we have on pending names okay we don't care so now unfortunately we're going to have to edit all of these guys together but it'll be fine and where, is, where are all these people why are there so many not sure why there are so many but anyway let's just keep Let's keep four of them. We'll be fine. So, as you can see, we have uh, some old code from here. Close all this. Let's add seeker. Let's add a path. AI path. Let's add Raycast modifier and let's use graph recasting and let's also add the rvo controller okay then on the AI path we change gravity we change the y-axis we don't want rotation and we always want to constrain or inside graph so i'm going to select preset i'm going to go on my data AI path preset and then on data AI path add to AI path default. So if I remove this and add an AI path, voila, we have the exact settings we want, but we kind of want to fix the radius as well. So we'll copy that let's see point one seems to be almost correct i'm just going to change this to point five oh, yeah. to point 0.5 and then let's override our previous ai path preset and this is default i could have just also changed this over here so let's do everything for them then you select this and just set this to AI path. Okay, so this guy should be fine. I'm going to close the units. I'm going to hit play and I'm going to Oh, let's hit play. Okay. 
and let's see what we are missing uh, we don't have the AI pathfinder hook actually oops yeah you know what actually no let's do AI pathfinder hook yeah we can move this on top as you can see it's not really that we have anything on it Okay, and give or take they have the same behavior. They are clipping through us, however, not that really that bad. But at least they are not clipping through them. I think if we add on a player controller now, if we add an RVO controller, then they should be avoiding us as well. Uh, let's try this. I haven't actually tried it before. And yeah. They are actually avoiding us as well. We need to change the radius to something smaller. But this is good enough, I'd say. Like they are not actually clipping through us or each other anymore. Just slightly end up because of, of the sprites, but it's fine. At least they they will never be at the same position, so they will never be overlapping, unless of course we want it. Now, this might introduce some issues with our, with our grab, but we're going to fix it anyway, it doesn't matter. Okay, so I like this. I'm going to keep at 0.2, I believe, or maybe 0.15. It looked like it worked fine. And let's see, let me think, what else could we add to this? Yeah, let's have the have it moving. I guess. So we need to do something about stop as well. So let's go on the AI Pathfinder hook and let's say public bool. Uh, actually, you know what? Let's do public void path status bool status. And then is AI path so can move equals status. So we're going to be keeping almost the same behavior as we had before, but through a different setting. So pathfinder hook, path status, false, false. And of course, we need to actually move at some point. And, but I think this is for dead, so that should be fine. And if we are interacting or our unit is dead, then we don't want to be moving. So if we're not, let's see. So actually I'm going to set to on the move to position, I'm going to say can move set this to true. Then We need to find the velocities for this. And yeah, of course, we're going to do this from the Pathfinder hook. There's some other things we can do, but I think. Uh, let's just say public bool is moving and we will return AI path dot you can check the current velocity 
we will just do a vector 3.0 if it's not low. let's see how this performs and if we have some issues then we always change it anyway so let's see let's enable this and then since we don't have to be checking for the remaining distance we can now tick um, ai pathfinder hook is moving i just do this let's see how this is going to perform let me Okay, and then move. Now, there, for some reason, there's always uh, one uh, one hit, one the first spawn. It only happens then. We could use this on. Uh, well, one way to fix this would be to just have. A hidden uh, guy over here that doesn't need an AI handler, doesn't need a UI controller, just needs a, a Pathfinder hook, and that's it. And it will initialize from start. Of course, make sure you're not counting this guy, and you will see that. Oh, actually, it doesn't. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. We need to find where that hit is coming from, but I don't think. Let's actually see if this will work. Not sure there is a wider spike. Anyway, ignore this for now. We'll find a fix for that later. Uh, yeah anyway and so let's say we want the enemies to come from a place up here that our player doesn't can go on our walkable area say we duplicate this we untick his player and let's add a new polygon collider D, and let's just assume that they will overlap over here okay i'm not going to i don't want to sit right on to inside the yeah, i don't want them to really overlap so we have to put this above over here let's say something like this and we want the enemies to come from here you can just place all the enemies over here same with the other guy as well okay so they can now walk through there let's let's actually put this on the side so we can see it uh, okay we need to bring this slightly down so it is connected but you will see i won't be able to go over here but the enemies will be able to walk through there okay okay that's all i can go as much as the collider allows me but i can go walk up there so with this you can make you know maybe enemies are coming around the alley or something something like that now I'll finish this part here because it's already too much, although I think we kind of solved some issues already because I saw the other guy was being pushed backwards, so I was worried this we will have to break them up from the 
on the grid but from what i saw it worked so you know yeah and they are being pushed backwards so that's good at least it's actually much harder to hit them now because you can't line them up uh, so easily anymore and they will actually try to avoid you okay awesome uh this guy doesn't have uh, the ai yeah, that's why it didn't hit now let's see how the grab is going to behave but whatever happens we're going to solve this on the next part so let's bring in the grab box and let's try it out ah it works it doesn't really have any issues so that's actually better than what i, I was expecting you don't have to fix that many problems then. There's some overlaps, but it's never a complete pixel overlap, so that saves us amazing an amazing more time. And of course, you can see because they are dead, the the radius it's not completely uh, dropped. So let's actually fix this as well, and. Basically, once the controller is dead, and once we set the path status to this, we could just uh, disable the AI handler, I guess. Yeah, let's just disable this, say, or let's just start destroying things. I don't know. Or better yet, once they are dead, I'm just going to un unparent the animator unit controller animator hook the transform dot parent equals null and pathfinder starts okay whatever and I'm just going to do destroy this dot game object let's see how this is going to Okay, let's kill a few of these buddies. Yeah, I think the other guy is dead, anyways. So we don't have to worry that much. He looks dead, and they all look dead. And uh, let's see. They do look dead, but they haven't. Keep, what did we destroy? We only destroy the nothing. What? So we're not coming in here, I guess. I think we're not coming in here because we are never. Because death happens once we are interacting. So let's try this. Uh, oops, now that's pretty bad. We need to say. Actually, you know what? Let's just make it. Uh, like so. And do a return. Lots of fixes, and I think we are pretty much done with this part. The rest will be more polish, uh, but yeah, for the most part, you also you almost have a game ready. There is some utilities. Well, actually, there's some important utilities we're going to have to add to this, and I'll show you. We'll talk about them in a new uh, game, in a new part of the new game the same game 
and yeah I can see them working uh, we lost the shadow which is a bit of a problem for us I wanted to keep the shadow so let's see we lost the shadow because the shadow was part wasn't part of the animator yeah it wasn't part of the animator hook do we have a shadow it? well easy fix really easy fix really easy before we do this although oh well, that's kind of not the way to do it but come on find the shadow i believe that will work do we have shadow we don't have the shadow over there but we could try and get it before we do the empire though get components here and shadow is it shadow utility yeah i think that's probably ours and we'll do shadow dot transfer dot parent equals null let me see if we are actually copying at all the we are changing the scale we are only changing we are forcing the target transform uh, y mm, so that's kind of not correct at least because it's not being parented no so Well, that's a bit of a bummer, but but I don't know. Well, okay, the we'll, we'll go the. I guess we can go this record start method. We could get all the mono behavior uh, values we have. Um, that's kind of stupid you know to be honest to do to do it this way let me think what do we have over here we have a uh, hundred you know, but i could just get all of them one by one and destroy them but it's not ideal because you might have different ai handlers you might have different uh, objects anyway so let's see what we get Uh, from our own game object, get components. Oh, we can't get components. We can get all the mono behaviors. Okay, so let's do for each in our monos. Destroy oh, all the mono behaviors we can have. Uh, I think it will have a problem with this with the transform. I think that's going to happen. We don't need to unparent it anymore. There's no Pathfinder hook anymore. You just return because this will also destroy this game object because it derives from one behavior. But I think it's going to have a problem with the transform. To avoid that problem, let's see first if that's the case. And to avoid that problem, then I'm going to, to cast each one and see if they are a transform. If they are a transform, then that means uh, we skip that. Let's clear this up. Oh, wait, they are pretty hard to beat. Yeah, as I said. Oh, uh, you can't remove the seeker because the rec has modified. So we have to leave the seeker first. We have to leave the seeker for last. So. Uh, if m dot is seeker or pathfinding dot seeker then continue if m dot is transform continue although i guess it's not 
Yeah. Okay. Tomorrow behaviors can be transferred. Okay. And then at the very last, find the seeker. Get component seeker. If seeker is not null, then destroy that as well. That will do it. Alternatively, you can just collect all your uh, components into one script and then destroy them, but I think fine. too much bother and no need. Oh boy, they are pretty hard to beat. I think we just need to give a little bit more. Okay, so because we are destroying the mono behavior, it stays dead because it doesn't apply. It doesn't apply root motion. So one thing we can do is before we get all of this, we can say unit controller uh, unit uh, animator hook apply root motion or animator we don't have the animator root motion status no let's expose the animator or do we have it anywhere else i don't think we do anyway so ai handler animator hook anim apply root motion equals true and that should be it Uh, however, I still believe that the shadow is still going to stay at the same position. Oh, God damn it. Yeah, okay. We're doing things the hard way. Not, I will tell you. But, uh, uh, you know what? Let's see if this will work. And it didn't work, anyways. There's keep falling in place so we're going to have to include them okay so we're going to have to rethink a little bit this we'll do that on the next part let's stop for right now because i'm really tired so you know what to do like subscribe share this with your friends family whatever and if you are liking this if you want to see more series more videos more of everything if you like to see more assets created for this although you haven't seen yet any but i do have some freelancers doing some stuff for it and then of course consider keep supporting me on patreon or any other way you see fit so we can continue making all of this and creating lessons pretty much uh, for everyone at a very 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 low price of five bucks <laughs> i'll see you on the next one